Hello everyone, I am Rajiv Ranjan Sinha, aka Gumukkar Somi. I am here to share the experiences of photography in Iceland. Why Iceland? Where is Iceland? You know where is Iceland because if you have heard the name about Iceland and you are a travel photographer, you must have known the location of that country because Iceland is there to offer you numerous things like black sand which is like uh, auroras everything means uh, lots of opportunities for a travel photographer so the first question when to visit iceland lots of participants and lots of friends used to ask me what is the best time to visit iceland every time every year means around the year is a favorable time for a landscape photographer. If you go in summer, you get midnight sun. Sun never sets in Arctic circle during summer. So here is the image which I clicked in the midnight. This is also the image I clicked at 1.30 a.m. Can you imagine the light we are getting at the horizon? It was marvelous. The light was soft light was golden color so it was a dream for every landscape photographer to go over there and shoot such light if you go in autumn you will get normal light it means normal means 12 hours of sunlight and 12 hours of darkness you will get in addition of that light you will get auroras it's a natural phenomena where you will get black colored lighting in sky but the night should be complete dark. It's, uh, there should uh, no any sunlight during those times. So you get a wonderful uh, aurora show, or you can say the northern lights over there at that time, in autumn or in winter, like this. It's an it's a awesome experience to see such lights. When I first saw uh, the aurora in my life, I stopped clicking the image and I started experiencing it. And I was trying to feel that uh, natural phenomenon. I was all stuck. So what are the things you should carry when you go to Iceland for a travel photography and for landscape photography? You must carry at least two cameras. We're doing the English version retake and I'm muting myself. Just press the play, just press play and keep it on. Yeah. Oh. Bar lightning ho rahi hai aur matlab thundering ho rahi hai. Nahi yeah. audio yahan nahi aa raha hai. Usko audio nahi aa raha. Okay. Yeah. All right, Rajiv. Hello everyone. I am Rajiv Ranjan Sinha, aka Gumukkar Sobhi. I am here to share the experience about photography in Iceland. So, let's discuss about landscape and travel photography in Iceland. So, a lot of questions uh, people used to ask me, what is the best time to visit over there? So, if you go in summer, you get midnight sun. Means there will be no darkness. You will get lots of golden hour over there. You can click such soft light and colorful light at one o'clock in the night. Like here also, you get such golden light at the horizon in the midnight. If you go in autumn or in winter, you get normal light plus aurora. Aurora will be an additional one. And aurora is also called northern lights. You get a natural phenomena and a natural creation of uh, green color or different color. Sometimes you get different color of uh, aurora. So you get such lights in autumn or in winter times. And it's an awesome experience to feel it, to see it. When I first saw this uh, natural phenomena, I stopped clicking images and I started feeling that thing. I, I was all stuck and I started observing such natural phenomena. It was unbelievable. So it's my recommendation whenever you go to Iceland, at least you carry two camera bodies.
and the lenses, you must cover the range of ultra wide angle like 14 mm to telephoto like 200 mm. You must carry all types of filters like CPL, GND, ND. You should have a tripod, you know that. And there must be a remote trigger to start the exposure and you don't do and you don't have to touch that camera again and again. How to travel? It's lots of questions regarding that. You will get local tour operator, you will get international tour operator, but those are really expensive. So the cheapest and the best option to explore Iceland is go for self-drive. It, it's really economical to travel over there with a self-driven car. So there is a ring road uh, around, that, uh, around that whole island. It is called the National Highway Number 1. You follow that road and you will cover the every part of the Iceland which lies around that, near that uh, ring road. So usually people opt uh, and go for anti-clockwise direction, but I always try to cover it in a, clock, in a clockwise direction. So I share you some uh, images like from the day one to the last day. So first day when we were at the capital city, which is Reykjavik, we got the midnight sun. The light was perfect. The color was perfect because it was really soft light and it was very colorful at that time. Next day, we started traveling to western part, that is Snaffels Peninsula. And I captured this image. I share the story and the, and the theory behind this image. I used 200 mm to compress and to hide the distance between those mountains, those glaciers, and with that green field in the foreground. So it was, uh, the light was good. The light was very, horizontal and it was very soft and this is a very iconic location in Iceland, Kigzufell. The mountain name is Kigzufell and that waterfall is known as Kigzufell Foss. Foss in Icelandic is a waterfall. So you have to be very careful in choosing your composition at this location because every photographer, whoever goes to Iceland captured this uh, iconic composition which is already shared and which is already flooded uh, on social media. So you have to be very careful and you have to be very creative in exploring a different composition over there. Like this, I captured the heart shaped reflection in the foreground and it was the morning session. It was the morning time and the cloud was dramatic. The light was good, light was soft. So I tried this composition. And it's not only about the location or the iconic location of the Iceland. Everywhere, everywhere, wherever you go, even on your highway, you can capture different composition and use, and you can use some creative ideas. Like here, I used very slow shutter speed of approximately eight seconds to capture the trail of the traffic with those dramatic clouds. Here also. The same thing, the, it was very cloudy, the sun was hiding behind those clouds and some light were just scattering uh, from inside. And it was, I clicked this image handheld, so I used some higher ISO. So it was noisy, but the overall feel of the image was good. At this place, I used slow shutter speed to smooth the seabed and due to that slow shutter speed i found some movement in the clouds also 
the good of us. Again, a very iconic location of Iceland. Here also, you have to be very careful about your composition because every photographer goes there and capture different compositions. So you have to be very creative to capture a different image from that location. This is the place I saw Aurora first time in my life. And it was a really wonderful experience to capture those auroras at this point, the same location, Goda Falls. Here also, the aurora at the same place with the different compositions, obviously. And again, in the morning, the next morning, I saw beautiful color of light hitting on those snow-capped mountain. I used a human, a human element to create a depth in the whole frame. So it was really awesome. It was really awesome experience to capture Goda Falls in the morning without any herd of people. Goda Falls in the morning. I tried to do some finite photography over there. So I used a uh, tone with some bluish tinge in it. There is another very uh, forceful waterfall, you can say. The flow was very heavy and it was very dramatic. So I used relatively faster, uh, faster shutter speed to capture the flow of that waterfall. So if you go for a very slow shutter speed, the effect will not come out according to your vision or the feel over there. The next day, we moved to Lake Maven. And it was, the morning was gorgeous. The sun, the golden light was hitting that snow-capped mountain and the clouds were, were uh, dramatic. The same location, Lake Maven in the evening. And there is one village, say this for in the eastern part of the Iceland. It's a very remote location. So uh, I went over there. I explored that village and in the morning, I, it was really good to capture such light with such reflection. And then you can see the color of the tree. It was autumn time. And as I said, there is no location, perfect location in Iceland to shoot landscape. Everywhere, every place, every part of the Iceland is full of surprises. Wherever you park your car, you will start clicking. This is the example. It was just a sea beach with a huge formation of rock inside that sea. So I stopped over there. I used 30 second shutter speed so that I can smooth the waves of the sea and the clouds were dramatic. Our next stoppage was Westerhorn. It is the most iconic or the famous location of Iceland. Westerhorn is that mountain. And I used those uh, waves as the leading line. In the, and those lines are leading our brain to that mountain. The same Westerhorn in the morning. You see, you can get a lots of composition over there. You have to just figure out which foreground you want to use because everyone goes over there and they can capture and they can use creative compositions over there. Numerous compositions are, are possible at that location. And there is another place, Estrohan. I used a human element to just create the feeling of sense of escape. Here also, the same Estrohan in the morning with that golden light. That Westerhorn with the human element in the evening. The reflection was good. And with this image, you can see it, it gives you the feeling that you are walking on the sea, on the water. The same with Westerhorn with the addition of human element. The same Westerhorn with some unique composition, like the foreground, I used some logged water, which was very colorful and it was very blue at that particular time. Same Westerhorn 
when the sun was setting and the blue hour was there. The foreground was just scattered and it was giving the reflection in a scattered form. So it was very glossy looking. So it was a really different composition means whatever I saw on social media. The same, the same thing, like there is no location in Iceland, wherever you go, you just get dramatic clouds and the, how you manage to use the complete frame. The Black Sand Beach, very famous location. It is also known as Diamond Beach. Everywhere, everywhere in Iceland, you get black sand because the whole island was formed with volcano ash. So it, it, this uh, beach is also known as Diamond Beach because you get a small icebergs which was thrown out from the sky by the sea. From the sea, by the sea. The same as some remote part of the Iceland. Colorful tree, low hanging clouds, beautiful mountain, and a white gate which is leading to the heaven. Two very iconic, very famous waterfall of Iceland, Skoga Falls and the Selenda Falls. In the Skoga Falls, I went over there when the light was hot, harsh. So I used very slow shutter speed to soften that light. And in, at Selenda Falls, I used human element and it shows the story that you can actually walk behind the waterfall and the sun was setting. So it was of uh, awesome experience to capture this shot because here the human element was feeling that waterfall. Cylinder force with a very slow shutter speed so that the flow of the mountain, the flow of the waterfall can be captured. Skoga Falls in the night. It is a very iconic location and you get Aurora over there. It's a really experience and a memorable experience to capture Aurora at such iconic location. And in the morning, whatever I saw over there, I was not able to believe to my eyes. The sky was dramatic. The cloud formation was dramatic. The golden light was awesome. So I used a relatively slow shutter speed. Just used one second to blur the movement of the waterfall and to freeze the movement of the sky. The same location. And there is some other location around that area. This is also a very famous location, Rainy Sphere Beach, which is also known as, popularly known as Black Sand Beach. Because in every, in every part of the Iceland, you get Black Sand Beach, but the, the, this uh, location, Rainy Sphere, is popularly known as Black Sand Beach. Some uh, Aurora shot, which uh, is what I captured during uh, my trip to Iceland. The, it was a very strong show created by nature at that time. I captured different colors of Aurora, different formation and different texture of the Aurora. And that the last Keflavik, which is also the international airport of the Iceland. So in the evening, we went near to the sea. We got an opportunity to shoot a lighthouse at that time when the light was soft, the sun was setting and the cloud was, clouds were really good. And next day, we just took the flight back to our home. So it was my experience of Iceland. Thank you.